Good skis? Yo, welcome back to Containing Luxury. On this episode, we're gonna be giving you an update on what we have done in our 20 foot giveaway container. Let's get started. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we're pretty far along on our build. We're actually almost done. I did have the kitchen sink that was supposed to be right here, but it uh, had a huge dent in it when I opened the box. So that's something that's gonna happen throughout your build. When you order materials, make sure to open them up and inventory them because that really sucked when I thought I was ready to put this in and boom, it wasn't there. So, but besides the kitchen sink that's missing and the faucet, we've got our countertops in, we've got our kitchen cabinets in, and uh, all of our shiplap is in place. We still have a couple of holes that we need to finish filling and uh, painting. We've been just trying to get as much work done as possible during this lockdown phase, but uh, it's almost there. So we, we got the flooring in uh, over the weekend. We got to finish building our pocket door. I got to go actually get the door that's gonna go in here. And besides that, we got a little wing wall that we need to frame here. So like all this will be like one big piece of wood with our pocket door that disappears into here. And uh, we'll have a latch on this side. The bathroom is about ready. It's only missing the toilet and uh, a couple of little molding pieces that we need to finish. Other than that, the whole valve is in, the shower's in, the, uh, the sink, the vanity, the faucet, all of this stuff is in place. And we just gotta drop that toilet in, throw some baseboards in and finish painting in here. And the bathroom is about done. I'm just struggling on if this is stuff I'm gonna finish before I ship it, or if I'm just going to get the toilet in here, keep it in the box, store it in here, finish framing all this, and kind of like, you know, keep a lot of the stuff in its packaging and then install it once it gets to where it's going. So that's likely what's gonna happen. So you might not get a complete finished video of this container until it actually gets to the recipient of our giveaway. If you're new to our channel, make sure to hit the link in the description. There's going to be a GoFundMe. We're trying to give, uh, give this container away, but in order to do that, we have to hit that $20,000 goal. So we, uh, we still have some of this stuff and actually I lied. I forgot that the new sink, our replacement sink, did just arrive yesterday. My guys loaded it in here. So I get to put the sink in um, or I might actually cut that when we get it there. But this is the water heater. We actually went with the same system that we did on the other one. Even though it's only four gallons, I know a lot of people were like, oh, you can have a tankless water heater and um, you know, you can, you can have gas tankless. And that's something that if you really want to, you can add that down the road. With us, we, we're probably bringing this to a location without giving too many hints away that we're trying to make this as energy efficient as possible. So we, we really don't wanna have a, uh, a gas tank outside. We, we're just gonna rely on our 50 amp RV plug, which again, this little four gallon water heater was the most energy efficient water heater that we could find. So that's what we're going with. There's a lot of different options. If you want a gas or a tankless water heater or an Insta-Hot and you wanna hook up 100 amps to your panel, then you can do that. But we had, I know on our last build, a lot of people chimed in. They were like, oh man, you could have put a tankless or you could use this. A lot of those use a lot more energy than what this system is. And there's a reason we went with it. It's for our preference and just note that. So uh, this is gonna be where our fridge goes, which uh, I just got a phone call, it is ready. We picked that one up from Home Depot. So we're gonna try and probably pick that up tomorrow. But again, we're gonna keep it in the box. We're not even gonna unbox it or open it. So you really won't get the final walkthrough of this thing uh, until it gets to its delivery point. So uh, we're about there. Um, if we spin around, Ryan will do one of his beautiful dance moves. Amazing, amazing Ryan. So we've got our entire AC system in. Um, the blah, blah, condenser unit is mounted on the front of the trailer, which is the back of the container. So uh, we've got that thing mounted up there. We're gonna protect it during travel, uh, just so it's not getting blasted by whatever on the trailer doing 60 miles an hour down the road. But this is the head unit. It again has a uh, thermostat remote control that will be able to move around the room, but obviously this is a 20 foot container. So really it's such a tiny room. Uh, it's not really gonna matter where you have your thermostat. It's gonna cool or heat this unit very quickly. 
So this is kind of a cool feature that was probably the biggest pain in the butt I've ever built in my life. It's a Murphy bed um, and the springs are super strong on this thing or the hydraulics. So we actually are gonna put a ball latch up here that will lock it in place when it goes, uh, you know, when you kind of push it in. So we haven't done that. We still have some little moldings and stuff that we wanna put around this thing. But this we wanted to serve as a couch so I could kind of sit here. I'll have cushions that we put on this. And then we have what could either serve as a uh, TV stand, uh, even though we mounted our electrical up on the wall. So we could essentially have a flat screen TV mounted up there and use this, which we'll put on little frame sliders. And we'll kind of be able to slide this around a little bit easier. But this could be your table for eating, or you could put your legs up and you know be able to watch TV. It also serves as additional storage. And we've got huge storage for cushions, uh, potentially to your couch and all your bedding and whatever inside here. But what's cool is this thing can slide back and you would drop your Murphy bed down and you would need to remove your couch cushions. So you'd pull those off and those could either go as your headboard up there or they just kind of go inside these cubbies where you could, you could store additional blankets and stuff as well. But uh, let's see if I can do this. So this thing just sneaks on by here and uh, it will sit right on here. Uh, pretty cool. So right now it, these, these hydraulics are pretty strong. So if I, if I let go, this thing would, would go up. But I think once we get the mattress on here and uh, it's sitting here, it should be pretty good. If not, I'm gonna counterweight it with a little steel strip right here that will help hold this thing down. But I think also the hydraulics over time are gonna loosen up and they won't have so much tension on them. But uh, I've got, you can see we've got a little electrical whip there. So we're gonna have a cool USB plug right there and probably build in just a little tiny shelf that won't be in the way of the frame of the bed so that you can charge your phone right here and you can lay in bed and watch TV. But if you needed to, this is gonna be another impact rated exterior door. And if you were in bed and God forsake you needed to evacuate this thing, these doors are always gonna swing out. So you could easily just get over here, grab the handle and get out of this thing as quickly as possible. But this turned out pretty cool. It was a total pain to build because it was really designed to be built on the ground and then you stand them up, which means you needed it to be shorter than the, the total overall height of your container. But in this case, we were trying to maximize every in, or every literally probably centimeter that we had and uh, being able to have the couch bench as high as possible meant shifting this whole thing up as high as possible. So now that we kind of know how this whole thing works, we'll put that little ball latch up there and when we close this thing, it won't be that big of a deal and it literally just barely squeaks by everything here. And boom, it will kind of shut up there and then we'll push it and we'll lock in and that will be it. So it turned out pretty cool. For 20 feet, this was the best we could think of. We got a little desk here that, uh, I guess I could use my Homer bucket for now, but, uh, oh, there's a can of paint. But essentially you'd have a, a little chair here and then, you know, you've got whatever you want to keep in there for desk supplies and you can put your laptop here and get some work done. So essentially you have a full kitchen, you've got a desk space to be able to work at, you've got your bed that comes out of the wall, you've got a full couch, you have an ottoman and or TV stand thing, um, and I guess it also serves as a table. And then you've got a full bathroom which has a nice 48 inch shower, it's got a little vanity, and your toilet, which is separate from here. So if you've got two people, it's still feasible. You're gonna have a full-size fridge. And then if Ryan spins around a little bit, we've got a, uh, it's a I think it's a 3.4 cubic foot washer and dryer. And if you read a lot of the reviews on these things, they don't work fantastic because it's ventless or ductless. So essentially it's still, it uses heat to try and dry the clothes, but they still come out a little bit damp. They never work fantastic, but what do you expect? So uh, rather than trying to get a full washer and dryer in here, I think it's gonna serve the purpose of what it needs to do. And you can always pull your clothes out a little bit damp and hang them on a line and boom, they'll be good to go. So for a 20 foot container, I think this is the best that we could possibly come up with. We've got tons of natural light in here. 
We have no power. Ryan and I are drenched in sweat because it's a thousand degrees in here right now. But uh, you know, when you open up these windows, it was pretty windy, so we didn't want to do that. But when you open up these windows, you get a nice draft going through here. And uh, again, impact rated windows. Um, oh man, we should have opened these up an hour ago. Woo, that's beautiful. Uh, but uh, it's nice, you know, we don't, we don't even need the lights on and we haven't even turned the lights on yet. So I think it's gonna be really cool when this thing's all said and done. You could do something cool to bring some, uh, some colors in with your, your cool, you know, uh, little bench seat covers. And if you wanna throw something up here, and uh, I th I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And I think whoever's getting this thing is gonna be super happy with how it turned out. So we've got a little couple, oh, this is a cool little gadget we threw in here too. So this is a USB and uh, 120 amp, or 120 amp, 120 volt outlet here. So you've got like a nice little station here that if you wanted to plug something in, um, you can charge your phone here and have all that kind of stuff here too, which was pretty cool. So that's a little like pop-up outlet. Okay, so I built these cool decorative beams and uh, not only are they decorative and they look really cool, but they're actually functional. So if you saw our electrical InsoFast video, it was kind of a pain getting electrical wires through all the InsoFast. And these shiplap panels are mounted with glue and then tacked into the InsoFast studs on the ceiling, which means there's virtually no gap in between. So these actually were raceways for us to bring electrical wires across without having to fish them through. So this little soffit we drilled through essentially like the fascia board on the soffit. And these are hollow with little chunks of two by four that, that are glued and screwed to the uh, studs in the ceiling. And then that allowed us to have like a little electrical raceway. So there's wires and transformers up in here for our little uh, three inch, 12 volt lighting um, system. Light bulb, blah, 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 blah. It turned out pretty cool, but they're three inch lights. Uh, they're 12 volts, so they're LED. They're really low energy. Again, this thing, I, I expect this thing's probably literally gonna use like 10 amps at full capacity. Uh, if you're not running like the washing machine and the, uh, like a coffee maker. But that's what's nice is this house, even with the AC going, every light on is gonna be drawing such low ampage that it still gives you room with a 50 amp RV supply to be able to actually run some, a device like this or um, you know, a coffee maker and really not have any issues because everything else was designed with such low energy in mind, exactly like this little water heater we have here, which is why we went with this system. And down the road, we might convert it over to gas, but for now, that's gonna be a functional system that we can drop this off and this thing works. And uh, that's about it for our tour for right now. Um, I'm really happy with how it's coming along. Everything's gonna look fantastic when it's all finished. We're almost there. So give us a break on the little details. You'll see some moldings are missing and some holes. So we still have kind of a lot of those things to do, but we're not really gonna have a chance to show you all of that stuff before we get to the location of where it's being given away and then finish everything on site with all those little details. So again, we hope this video has been informative. Thank you to everyone that's been uh, helping us reach that giveaway goal. And uh, we have yet to do so. So if you're watching this and you like what you're seeing and you wanna be responsible for somebody getting a home, make sure to check the link in the description to the GoFundMe and help us reach that goal. So other than that, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Containing Luxury, out.